Um, I do want you to look at page 10 in the top right hand corner. Here is another task that we want them to do. And on the top right hand side, you're going to see a Form 21 ADA. It's a checkoff list. And there's also right next to it an accessibility guide. So the guide is like this. It's explaining what has to be done within a precinct polling place. So every polling location has to have a 36 inch walkway. That means from the time that a person is checking in with the two election judges, they have to have a 36 inch path to navigate and walk around. And also 36 inches to walk to a voting booth where they will cast their uh, ballot privately. And then also 36 inch pathway to get to the ballot scanner where they're going to deposit their ballot. That's great. But now also there has to be a 60 um, inch parameter in the lowered voting booth as well as the touch screen. So there is this measuring device and it's a big circle that you're going to see your lowered voting booth right here, right? So this lowered voting booth is used for people who sometimes if they can't stand for a long length of time, they can sit and they can mark their ballot by using this as a, as a tabletop, right? But if there's a person with a scooter or a wheelchair or a walker, this can be removed. But you have to measure out the distance right here. So this circle would be laid out on the floor. And then you would measure to make sure that that device, meaning that wheelchair or that walker, is able to roll into this unit, but then be able to turn around, right? You do not leave this measuring device on the floor. You will lift it up and put it back inside the election supply carrier so that it's not a tripping hazard, okay? But that has to be done. And guess what? If there, if there are things in the way, like that chair, well, guess what? You have to move it. Or maybe if there's not that much room, you may have to start taking down some of those taller voting booths because we have to be in compliance. This circle will also be laid out in front of the touch screen. So the touch screen, the same rules apply. You must make sure that there is enough space um, between, you know, like the touch screen voting booth as well. So once you set up your touch screen, you'll lay that circle down as well um, to make sure that a wheelchair or scooter or any of those devices can navigate and turn themselves around to exit. Um, there's going to be a checkoff list. So the checkoff list, we will make a check mark if they need to comply with the change, right? So not all of our precincts are 100% accessible, but we want them to be. So there may be some temporary remedies that the um, election coordinator can do to make it as accessible as possible. So just to give you a for instance, some of the Chicago public schools have, um, let's say water fountains, right? They jut out from the wall. But if a person is blind or visually impaired and they have their stick, they may not know it's there, right? Because it juts out, but it doesn't go all the way to the ground. And they may trip over it. But the election coordinator may have to put something, and I'm just using the cone as a for instance, they may have to put something underneath it so that when the person does hit it with their cane, they know to walk around it, right? So there's not a tripping hazard. So again, if there's a check mark on the form, they have to do it. If there's not a check mark, they don't have to do it. It's, all, it's already in compliance. Um, and they have to sign off on that sheet and make sure that it comes back in the black roller bag, even though they don't return it. It has to be in that black roller bag, okay? So that's something that we want them to do. 